All right, you guys, welcome back to the vlog. Times have changed and there are some crazy shoes out there that are making people run crazy fast. Records have been destroyed in college running and professional running and high school running all across the board and people are running faster than ever in history. So how much of it is the shoes? Um, I'm about to go to BYU and we're gonna talk to a BYU professor of biomechanics who works a lot with the team. Um, he's an alumni from BYU's cross country team as well and a good friend of mine. So we're gonna talk to Doc and he's gonna talk to us about his opinion on shoes. I'm Dr. Ian Hunter in the lab here, working as a professor in biomechanics, studying how we can make people run faster through how they move and also the effect of footwear and what that can do to help someone be faster or more economical in how they run. So the Nike Vaporfly came out and changed everything that we were thinking about shoes being lightweight and thin. They still are relatively lightweight, but there's a whole lot of foam there and then a carbon fiber plate that's holding this shoe together, giving it some extra stiffness. So other companies have started looking at that. And the foam comes from different sources. It's not exactly the same. Uh, each company will probably tell you ours is better. Uh, they both have stiff carbon fiber plates in. And something that we did that was kind of interesting uh, between these shoes, uh, we looked at how stiff this should be and what benefit that has and learned from that um, there is an optimal stiffness on average for that carbon fiber, but it's very individual. It's not the same stiffness for each person that works best. And it's a very, very minimal benefit that comes from that carbon fiber plate. A lot mm -hmm. of people were worried about the plate acting as a spring and helping propel people off the ground. It does not work that way at all. Um, the plate's purpose, we believe now, is more to hold that foam together. If you ever run in a Vaporfly or an Endorphin Pro or similar style shoe from another company, if you are running fairly quickly and make a sharp turn, the shoes feel like they're somewhat collapsing into the ground. You might, it, you have to widen the turn a little bit or slow down. Uh, but with that plate in there, that foam gets held together a little better. And I think that's more of the benefit of having the plate in there rather than it working as uh, changing the mechanics of the foot. Okay, first of all, how much difference do you think like the Nike Dragonfly or, or Super Track shoes make in say a 5K? Okay. That is really hard to tell right now. If you talk to someone that's worn them and ran a good 5K, they'll say it was my fitness and it wasn't the shoes. If you talk to the person that was not wearing those that got beat, they only got beat because of the shoes. <laughs> so we have a lot of just, so true. it's all anecdotal right now. There's not any good data that really shows it, but the purpose of the Dragonfly and the design of it, even though it's not as thick of a foam, it's designed the same as these Vaporflies, at least in terms of uh, trying to get more responsive foam built into a shoe. So I'm convinced that it does help with performance. The degree that that turns into, uh, I really don't know yet. There, there's a lot of stats, statisticians and hopefully some studies that are starting to look at that. Um, I doubt it's as big of an effect as a lot of people have claimed, but it wouldn't surprise me if say in a 5K, we're looking at uh, maybe getting somewhere close to a second a lap. Uh, a second a lap? Whoa, that's crazy. That's, that's very meaningful, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think it would be over that. So we're looking at decimals of a second per lap, but we, if we're outdoor track, we've got 12 and a half laps. So yeah, to me, my first guess is there's a few seconds benefit, but it's not going to be like, I think some people have claimed 20, 30 seconds or something. It, it, it couldn't be that much because the shoes were not bad before. I guess I could say I actually attribute most of it to the shoes, but not because of the shoes. Someone comes out and puts those shoes on and Kajelcha goes and does these crazy world records. And uh, people start thinking, oh, 
well, if he can do it in those shoes, maybe I can too. And everyone starts buying these shoes and believing in themselves a little bit more. I think it's more the psychology of the shoe mm -hmm. more than the actual physics of what's going on. You think of, uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to go read sometime the full story of the first sub four minute mile. And there were people so close for years. And as soon as he did it, everyone started believing, oh, it is possible to do that. And then it kept dropping rapidly from that point. And now we've got, what, like 2,000 people or something that have done it since. It's been a lot of decades, but for a time it was impossible. As soon as the psychology was there to allow people to believe it can be done, then it starts happening regularly. And I think a bit of that is going on with these shoes. Okay, so with all the different companies doing their things, Nike clearly had the lead in all of this uh, when the Vaporfly came out and then successive models since and other companies were a bit behind. Um, I've mostly seen excitement between Nike and Saucony, uh, but ASICS has come along recently with some good success. Um, Molly Seidel wore mm. ASICS in her, her oh, bronze yeah. medal. So, but she qualified for the team in the Saucony. So um, I don't think one company just has a huge percent advantage in terms of their shoe over another. They're all designed with the same idea behind. My camera actually had a glitch. I didn't get this on camera, but I did ask Doc what brand of shoes were the best according to the research they've done. He did a study with a lot of the company's super shoes and didn't notice a significant advantage between one or the other so um, it sounds like from his perspectives there isn't a clear winner as to which shoe is the most efficient as when you're looking at Saucony, Nike, Adidas and many of those other companies that have uh, super shoes. The last thing that I think needs to be said about these shoes is that they have value outside of just running faster times. And what I mean by that is recovery. A lot of studies have shown extreme benefits to recovery when you're doing workouts in dragonflies versus just normal spikes or doing workouts in 4% or next percents as opposed to just um, like normal training shoes. The cushioning is softer and so it helps your legs to not be as sore and recover quicker. So I know a lot of guys on the BYU team, they prefer to train in those. Um, not just to flex on your workouts, but also for recovering. I'm curious to know your guys' perspective. How much of a difference do shoes actually make? Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you all in the next video.